Hello and welcome again. Pastor Deborah here and this is the King's International Spiritual Care University. We are in the section called basic and we've dropped down into the second level of basic about ancient history. I believe this is video two of the ancient days. This one is going to be entitled Ancient Kingdom. On the last one we talked about as I was beginning to make these changes from being a mental health counselor to a pastor and helping people from a spiritual way. I had to go back and study ancient civilizations, religion, faith, and learn about spiritual things, excuse me, in the realm of civilization, our ancient ancestors, so I would have some foundational information. This video, this class, is about the ancient kingdom that started it all. Long ago, I have a lot on the website called Storytime. It talks about the one, the one who created everything and how he decided to come out, step out of himself into the vastness of nothingness and create. And what he created was a kingdom. Well, in order to have a kingdom, which is a government, it is a country, it is a territory, it's a land. Okay, that's what he called it, a king's domain. So this creator of this ancient kingdom also classified himself as a king, not a president, not a prime minister, not elected, not a mayor, and not a governor but a king. And his domain, the D-O-M, means the territory, the land, the resources, the people, the creatures that I have rulership over, management over, that I govern. And why do I have that? By right of creation. I created it the land, the resources, the beings, the creatures. And I have a governmental system called a kingdom. There's laws, there's courts, there's libraries, there's justice, there's lawyers, there's attorneys, there's books. So I started studying this ancient kingdom was in the spiritual realm. I learned last time that there used to be some dude named Lucifer and he was created, poofed out by this creator as one of the high archangels in this kingdom. And the kingdom actually had a name called heaven. Some people also call it paradise. And what happens is, it was in this spiritual realm, when you study a lot of your ancient texts, it talks about it's high above the earth, off planet. We would consider this kingdom an alien nation with beings and creatures. If you study even the Egyptians and early ancestors believed in things from another place, called them star men that came down here, but they weren't from here. So I had to start studying this king's domain. I had to study the king. I had to know what a king was. I had to study what a kingdom was. One of the great helpers that helped me then, he's gone on to heaven, was Dr. Miles Monroe out of the Bahamas. And he went and got a, I don't know, a doctorate of divinity, but they never talked about being a kingdom. 
And he grew up in his childhood in the Bahamas, which was a colony of England. So he had an understanding of kings and queens and colonies and stuff, and he was able to start teaching. And I picked it up. And then I would go and look at the Bible, and I would hear the message of this young preacher named Jesus Christ, and he would say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Huh? Okay. So I had to have Miles Monroe's books, Rediscovering the Kingdom, Rediscovering that we ourselves were kings. Oh boy, that was a weird one. I had to study what this kingdom was. What is this heaven? Where is it? I listen to ancient alien people. They talk about off-planet creatures coming down, spaceships. I go, yeah. Okay, Watchers, Book of Enoch, great book. Gnostic Gospels, great. Oh, it was strange. But I saw the message that was being taught and preached and then I started seeing that this kingdom had some power and authority from there wherever there was down here and this young Jesus dude could speak to fig trees they dry up he could speak to fish they get in a net he could speak to other spiritual things that also fell and they would leave people going to pigs. He could deal with sickness and diseases that were earthly. There you go, this is okay. I didn't hear about any of this in mental health. This was all new to me. But I had to listen to Miles Monroe, got the books, listen to the deep. What is a kingdom? What is a king? What are the characteristics? What are the qualities? Why did this creator call himself king why did he have a kingdom what's the purpose what is a kingdom oh this was all different I only knew religion but one thing that I, I realized early on was that when I do die I'm going up here and I believe there was going to be a heaven and heaven was some kind of country or place Okay, it's a kingdom, okay. So I wanted to start getting ready for that. So what I did is I went to the church I was at. I went and pulled my membership card. Because I realized when I signed my membership, I said, I agree with what your doctrines are, your position papers, even if it went against my brothers and sisters of another denomination. I said, that's not right. We're all going to be up there. And there wasn't going to be all these separation of denominations. So I might as well now, while I'm on earth, start thinking and changing my thoughts and my words that I was a kingdom person. So I pulled my membership. Then I ran into a pastor at an outreach ministry. And he says, where do you go to church? And where are you planted and registered as a member? I go, well, I go wherever I'm led. I'm over here tonight with you outside. I might be over here at this church, depending on what's being preached or whatever. Okay. He goes, no, but where are you planted? I go, sir, there's only one church. Okay. And it's a part of this kingdom I have my membership card it's blood red and when I get up there there aren't going to be any of these denominations. he says you don't understand you've got to be registered like we register cars I go no I am registered I mean the only church there is that this Christ Jesus was building and he got all upset and flustered but that's how I started my journey to understanding kingdom and I would get all of Dr. Miles' books. There wasn't anybody else preaching it back 20 years ago. He had videos, and I bought them, and he's on YouTube, and I watch him. And uh, I would listen to him. 
and I'd write down the characteristics of a king, a kingdom. Why was it a kingdom? What does that mean? And then I'd go to the Bible and I'd look up. So I was beginning to understand. I, spiritually, was a king sent down here from this place to rule and reign down here spiritually for him through my physical body. I was to have authority that like and demonstrate the power of that kingdom down here. I was to be able to speak to plants and animals and they obey me. They were in the natural. And the natural that we see was created by the spiritual. And I was to be able to also have power over the Lucifer and his strong men and speak to them and they would obey me. And I was learning I had the power over earthly sicknesses and diseases. I read one book. I think it was called Ministering Deliverance. First time I read it, the only thing I remembered was I had authority over germs. Germs are earthly. I can speak to germs. And I had to go then read the book and I had to learn about this young rabbi, what he did. And I had to go study the kingdom some more. What is it? But I also read that from the guy in there named Paul that I had to be under teachers and tutors for a long time until I was released by the Father to be about the kingdom's family business. But until I was released, I had to stay under teachers and tutors in the church, under pastors, on ministry teams, on prayer teams, studying miles. I still watch him on YouTube now because I forget. So I had to study a kingdom, king. What's in the king? What, what does this whole thing mean? What was this message, this young rabbi coming out of the wilderness says, repent, change your mind. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then I would look back in the Old Testament and Isaiah, and he said, this young guy is coming, this, this child's coming, he's got something on his shoulders. He's got a government, a kingdom. What? Well, where's religion? Where's this church buildings? Where are all these denominations we have? I, I, I couldn't find it. I go, oh, God. I had to quietly study, read, reread, watch the videos, take up notes and more notes and more notes. I had to read the Word again. I had to study again. And then I'd go, I don't understand. Why do we have this down here? We have all these religions. We have all these Protestant denominations. But that's Jesus didn't say it. He said, the kingdom's here. I, I, it was difficult. And even Miles talked about when you've been in religion, been a Christian, which actually was a pagan term that was given by the people of the pagans in Antioch, in this little Christ. Because Jesus never called us Christians. He said, your sons. And you are a king and a lord and I'm over you. So my whole mind was having to shift from religion, Christianity, denominations, kingdom. I'm a king? What? I'm from another planet? Off-planet alien? What? We hear that when the young rabbi, rabbi, Jesus, tells Pontius Pilate, hey, I was born to testify that I am a king. So was I, I learned. But my kingdom, it ain't from planet Earth. It's, it's here, but it's not from here. And if I had to and wanted to, I could call 10,000 legions of angels, and they'd come down here and prevent you from doing what you're fixing to do. Now that's a king, Jesus, talking to Pontius Pilate, who represented the king, the emperor, king to king. 
Cool. What do you think the Pontius Pilate felt? Okay. Hmm. But he said it wasn't from that this world. So I'm having to go back and I'm going, oh, my mind is hurting. I was a mental health counselor, understood all that. I was in Christianity and denominations and religion. Members. Now I'm over here. I'm in a country. I'm a citizen of a new country. I'm a child of this creator, this God. I'm a son, that means offspring. I'm just like him. Oh, this was hard. This was total different change of way of thinking. And it didn't come easy. And I had to keep studying, watching videos. I had to study this ancient kingdom. I had to learn about heaven. I had to learn about this creator who is a king. And he's Lord, which means owner. And to learn about the family business down here. I had to learn about the authority and power a king has. Decrees, laws, war. What were my soldiers? Battle, righteousness. I had to be a judge. I also had to be a shepherd. I had to study King David, all the kings. Whew. Some were good, some were bad. I had to study. Because I was going back to the ancient kingdoms. And I knew nothing about it. I'm trying to come out of this thing called religion, called Christianity, that the pagans put on us. Jesus never called us a Christian. He said, you're sons. You're anointed. You're sons of the living God, just like I am. Pagans, that means somebody that didn't believe in Jesus. I think they were in Antioch, called us, called those early one Christians. So now, if you call yourself a Christian, you're just living up to what the pagans said, but not what Jesus said. What is religion? How did we get all these denominations? How come nobody's preaching the kingdom message? And Miles talked about it, and then he had to go and unlearn all of his religion. His father was a Baptist pastor. Grew up in the Baptist church. He went to school, I think, at Oral Roberts University. Got a master's or something of divinity. They never talked about kingdom, kings. And then when he, and his story was, I think, after he graduated, um, now he grew up as a colony in England when he was a little boy. And he was going to go preach somewhere, and God asked him what he was going to preach on. He said, well, Jesus' message, you know, salvation, the cross. And he said, can't use you. What do you mean? I need the kingdom, Todd. Okay. But he, he had gone to school, no classes on the kingdom. So he started writing the books, and he used his earthly life being as a colony of England, being under a queen, crown land, everything, and he used that to show us how to live in this kingdom of heaven and how that was the message that this young rabbi preached, not all what Christianity and religion is preaching. He also demonstrated the power of that kingdom called the kingdom of God here on earth, the influence of it against the strong men that the Robertsons had discovered, against sickness and illness, against trees and plants. He demonstrated that there's a spiritual thing when you get there and you realize you're a spiritual king, and that is what we lost when we fell in the garden, was our rulership. And we lost our ability, we became a tail instead of the head. 
and we had no more rulership over sicknesses, diseases, the spiritual strong men that were in our life. We didn't have any authority over them. So Miles Monroe, like I said, he's gone now to heaven. His books, his teaching, they're out on YouTube. I think he still has his church. He even looked at it. We're not, we are ambassadors of this country called heaven, the kingdom of heaven. We are government officials, diplomats. We're not to have our own personal opinions. We're to speak only the position of our king, our country. But we're to go into other countries here on earth as a government official with all authority backing us up of our government, heaven. So he, he teaches on being an ambassador, how you're to talk to people. You don't give your opinion. Ambassadors give the king opinion, what he says. We don't vote on things. It's already written down. So this is where I started. It was in the ancient kingdom of the kingdom of heaven. I looked up the word. I looked at all the scripture references. And remember, all they had was the Old Testament. It's back there. They even were told that this God of this kingdom said, I'm going to make all you guys a kingdom of priests unto me. And my, this child that's common, Isaiah prophesied it, you don't have a, a government on his shoulder. So kingdom's a government. It's a land. It's a country. And he's come, and this Jesus, what he did was, he came back to bring back the kingdom, this government of heaven, and to restore the kings of it, which was all of humanity, and he had to go to this cross to pay this price so they could be restored. So he was really restoring kings and the kingdom back on earth spiritually so they could be about what they were originally created to do, have authority and dominion down here spiritually inside the dirt and rule and reign from the kingdom of heaven's philosophies, judge, uh, justice and mercy, and bring that culture, that influence, those ideas, those concepts down here, take new territory, men's minds and their spiritual hearts, so that they can start thinking new ways that they can repent, that means change their thinking and believe this ancient truth that they, there's a kingdom called heaven. You are a king in it. I've come to restore you, to give you back your authority and your power down here so that this earth and the world that surrounds it, this government, this system, looks just like heaven. And the influence that's in heaven, this government, this just surrounds this earth. It governs the land, it governs the resources, the systems, the uh, political stuff, the education, the heart, mind, and soul. So I was making mental health and Christianity were my thing. And now I had to go from Christianity to kingdom. It took a long time, but I took baby steps. I did what I could, pulled my membership, started studying the kingdom, started studying kings, started studying uh, ancient kings like in England, all the kings now, kingdoms. Okay, how did they rule? Some of Queen Elizabeth, all the English kings, excellent to study of what the rulership looked like, how the kingdoms operated. There were councils in there. 
but all the land belonged to the king or the queen. Miles called it crown land. And the, when you learn, just look at this, you say, the Lord says, the earth is mine. It belongs to me. I created it. Now I'll let you guys come down here and live, manage it, supervise it. But it, you can be the Lord over it because it's yours. You're in the family now. And so I had a whole philosophy change. My whole idea from Christianity to kingdom had to change. I had to think of myself differently. And I had to look at religions, denominations, and, and I found them. And Paul says, I think it's in Galatians, that when you have divisions among yourself, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you're acting just like an unsaved, you're a child. So I saw the denominations as a work of the flesh, a child. They're in divisions. And until you can get to that kingdom mentality and be about the kingdom's business and see yourself as a king with power, even if you just sit on the pew, over sickness and disease and illnesses and strong men that the Robertsons discovered, you're just a child. That's what Paul says. You're under teachers and tutors. And you're in divisions. And you're in strife. And you're jealous. And that's where you are. And some of us come on over here. And we start learning. So that's what happened to me. When I started studying the ancient kingdom. Then what I had to learn was the patterns. How was this set up? How was it organized? Because what I had to learn was that when that one cherubim called Lucifer got cast down here and fell, his only pattern for government, for organizational structure, was the ancient kingdom of heaven. He knew how it worked. So he brought that pattern down here, and he set up his kingdom called darkness, which means ignorance. It rules by ignorance and it took all his one third that fell with him they or at first they didn't do real well they just went nuts and bonkers and all kinds of stuff there was no uh, organization to them and it got real crazy and that's when the big guy said we're gonna have to just wipe out everything so he brought the flood there's a lot of flood stories. So after the flood, down here, this Lucifer, who had become Satan, I learned, decided to organize his strong men and follow the pattern of the kingdom of heaven. He started building his kingdom inside of humanity, building his castles and his temples. You see it in Greece. Okay, he started building, organizing his strong men, working through the people, getting control of the people, just like God wanted. Get a control of this land, spirit, soul, and body. And then go about and get in government, make laws and rules, have temples, and we see them all in ancient kingdom. Okay. So he took the pattern that he knew from the kingdom of heaven created a kingdom of darkness. So how I learn how he's doing what he's doing with his strong men and what he's after is I look at that kingdom. Because he had five I wills. I think I don't remember which could be in Isaiah. And he said, I want to sit up in the high place above the clouds, above everything. I'm going to rule. He had five I wills. I can't even remember what they were. I will do this. I'll be able to club. I'm going to sit up there. Okay. Well, that didn't work out for him up in heaven. He got cast down. So what happened was, he said, I'll build it down here. I'll build this governing structure, this kingdom. I will put my strong man, and I will declare that I own the land. I'll put a strong man, quote, demonic spirit at every water, every tree, every land, every mountain, every pool, everything. 
and I'll put one of my guys there and claim it for us. Sort of like if you ever study the gold rush, you would have somebody coming in and jumping your claim and putting their claim up and say it's theirs. And that's what he did. Now, mankind was in ignorance about all this. They didn't know. Uh, but they knew there would be like at certain grottos or lakes or rivers or pools. They knew something about gods and goddesses, something about up there, Olympus or something. And, you know, they knew, the Egyptians knew there were gods of some kind. Sometimes they looked like half human and half beast. So gods and kingdom, always a part of humanity. I had to study. I had to study what this kingdom of heaven was like. Sort of like studying what a good $20 bill is. Then when you see a counterfeit, you know. And I had to know that this Lucifer dude who became Satan, adversary of God, and everything he is. So first I have to study what God is. So I can know how he's against and how I had to learn one kingdom so I could learn how Satan built his kingdom down here, his fortresses, his castles, what kind of soldiers he has, his high towers, his plan, how he ruled his council, who were his kings, who were his uh, preachers. And um, I had to learn. So I had to study ancient kingdom, kings. And I had to study on both sides. So that's where I began. And I was coming out of Christianity and not thinking like a Christian, but thinking as a kingdom citizen, that I was a king. I wasn't just a church member. And I became free so that if God wanted me to go here to listen to a sermon or go there or stay at home, I did whatever my king and my lord was telling me to do. I was not controlled anymore by the pastors, by you have to stay planted here to grow. We need your ties. You have to stay where God puts you. So I became a free person able to move wherever God needed me to move, stay at home if I needed to rest. But I had to study. So you will study ancient kingdoms, you'll study the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, you'll study the kingdom of darkness, you'll study kings, you'll study how kingdoms, you can learn a lot by studying uh, the kings and queens of England and other countries, how they run the country, how a government is run, what ambassadors are. That's just the beginning. So I wanted to bring this, I think it's, video two of the ancient history about the ancient kingdom. So enjoy, learn, study, go look up Dr. Miles Monroe, he's still got a church, and his son, I think daughter, uh, are running it, and they still show it on YouTube, they still have his books, excellent, and learn about this message called the kingdom of heaven has returned and is here now and learn who you are spiritually and how to be a king how to rule and reign down here from that kingdom now most Christian churches don't teach on it they uh, I don't know why but there's a lot, there are some good books out there. Uh, other people do teach on kingdom stuff. So go learn. We're going to live in a kingdom up in heaven for a little bit. And we're coming back to earth. If you get to the back of the book, you say, we don't stay there. We're coming back to our earth where the kingdom of God will be ruling. And the kings will finally be doing what they're supposed to have done ruling and reigning. So they ain't going to stay up there. We aren't going to have all these divisions, denominations. We're all going to be one family, kings. Right now, if you're a child, you're considered a prince, sort of like Prince Charles and Prince William. They're not king yet. 
They have the title of prince. And until the Father releases you and you're trained, you're educated, he can trust you with the kingdom business, then you become a king. You're an adult. But till then, you're just a prince. But you're in the family. You're learning how to be a ruler. you got to learn how to rule this system spiritually from the kingdom of heaven. You have to learn how to rule your mouth, your appetites, have dominion over your body, dominion over your thoughts. You have to learn how to have dominion over the strong men, sickness and diseases and all of that before you can get released as a king, ambassador to this planet for that kingdom. So you're really an alien spiritually. You're an off-planet being. Your home country is up there. And you are sent to this colony, this land called Earth, to rule it and reign it on behalf of the king. It's a total different message than just being a Christian of what the pagans called us in Antioch. You'll never see Jesus calling himself a Christian. He said, I'm the son, means offspring, of the living God. And I am a king, and you are a king. I am a lord, I, that means owner. And you are a lord. You own this stuff. I own the earth that was given to me by right of being a king. Belongs in the family. So it's a different way of thinking. And so I wanted to bring that to you. This was part of my journey of learning how to help people, not the mental health way, not the Christian way, but a kingdom way. It's vital. And the only message that Jesus says that even frightens these strong men, and even Satan himself, is when the kingdom message is preached and taught. That perks up his ears. He gets a Okay, as long as you preach just other stuff, he ain't worried. When you start talking kingdom talk, because he's a king in his kingdom, and you start talking kingdom, king, kingdom, king, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, okay, it's a different ball game. And the attacks are fierce, and he's coming after you. So enjoy, and see you next time, Pastor Deborah.